Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In today's video, I want to talk about something that could be a real time saver for those of you that use Lightroom Classic. If you find that you're often exporting images from Lightroom Classic of the same file type and file size, I think you'll find if you create an export preset, you'll save a lot of time. And in today's video, I'm going to teach you how to do it. I have this image here and I want to export it. So I'm going to open up the export dialog box. Now you'll notice on the left hand side, there are a number of presets here already. At the very top where it says Lightroom presets, these are presets that are already built into Lightroom Classic. If I click on any of these, what will happen is it will automatically put the export settings on the right side of the dialog box. So instead of having to go through each of the settings in the dialog box, export dialog box, you just click on the preset and it will automatically put those settings over here for you. So you'll see how that could be a real time saver if you're often exporting images of the same file size, file type, and even to the same location on your computer. Now at the top are those Lightroom presets that are built into Lightroom. Below that are a number of third-party presets. It looks like I have about seven of them, maybe one, two, three, four, five, six of them. Six different categories of export presets. When you install an application on your computer that in turn installs a plugin into Lightroom Classic, often that plugin will include some export presets. For example, I installed Luminar Neo on my computer. When I installed Luminar Neo on my computer, Luminar Neo, installed a plugin in Lightroom Classic and along with that plugin it installed two different export presets. So those are there as well. And then below that are user presets. This is what I'm talking about. These are presets that we create ourselves to save us that time I'm talking about. Now you can see I have three of them. I have two different what I've called video presets. When, often when I'm exporting images from Lightroom, I'm going to be using them in a video and I need them to be a very specific size and that size will be different whether it's a horizontal image or a vertical image. So I have two different export presets for that. Then I have an export presets that I called original. Often I have to export a raw file as is with no editing done to it because I'm going to use it in another application. So I have an export preset I called original. Now today, I want to create an export preset for images that I'm going to be using on Instagram. I'm going to be posting them to Instagram. Now you could really post any size image to Instagram, but if you want the image to look its best, Instagram recommends that it be a very specific size. And that's why I want to create an export preset. Now what you need to do when you want to create this export preset is go over on the right hand side and put the settings in you want for that preset. Now, first of all, where do I want to export this image to? I like to export my images for use on Instagram to my desktop. So I'm going to leave it to a very specific folder desktop. I already have it set that way. That's where I actually um, export most of my images to, no matter what use I export them to my desktop. Now you may want to be in a very specific folder and a very specific drive for your whatever. Just put that in here. So you're going to do it, you know, do that here. And existing files, I'm going to have it ask what to do. Then, how do I want those images named? I want to use, and again, you don't have to do it my way. You can do it any way you want, even if you're exporting for Instagram. Um, I want them to be a custom name with a sequence, because often I'm exporting a bunch of images at once that I'm going to be sharing on Instagram. So I want them, and they're usually the same themed image, like it'll be like Hoyt Lake, and it will be six different images of Hoyt Lake. So I would then want the custom text to say Hoyt Lake, and then the start number to be one, so that it will then sequentially number each of those images. So what I'm going to do, because I'm creating a preset right now, is I'm not going to put a name in here. I'm gonna leave it blank. That's the only thing I'll have to add every time I use this preset. I just have to give the file a name. Now, again, you don't have to. I could put Instagram here, and then every image that it exports will say Instagram. Um, I could do whatever I want there, but I'm going to leave it blank. So it's going to be blank right now. 
And then when I use the preset, I'll just give it a name. Well, what do I want? Well, I'm going to JPEG. I want sRGB and I want the quality to be 100. I'm not going to limit the file size. Now, this is the important part. It is recommended that when you export a horizontal image or you want to upload a horizontal image to Instagram, that the long edge of that image be 1,080 pixels. So I'm going to put 1,080 here. Now, in the description below this video, I'll have a link to a web page that gives you the recommended sizes for Instagram if you're going to use the uh, image in a story or in your grid or if you're creating an ad. It has the sizes that is it recommends. And um, in that, um, or on that web page, it does say that the long edge image on a horizontal picture should be 1080. So this preset that I'm actually creating for Instagram is for horizontal images on Instagram. And I think you'll find it works for square images as well. So be for horizontal and square images. So that's what I want there. Long edge, 1080, uh, resolution 300. doesn't matter what you put here. Uh, you hear varying stories about this. People say put 72, put 240. You could put one there and it's going to look exactly the same as if you put 3000 there. So don't worry about the resolution. I'll just leave it at 300. I'm not going to do any sharpening from screen. Many people like to sharpen for screen standard. I don't. So I just leave it blank. Now, what do I want to include? Now, since I'm sharing this image for the world, with the world, I don't want to include all the metadata. I don't want people to have, like I put my phone number in the metadata. I don't want people to see that. I don't want them to see my address, even though it's a PO box, uh, stuff like that. So what I will put though, is I want just the copyright, copyright and contact info, probably no copyright because contact info would be my phone number. So just the copyright only. That's what I want people to only see. No watermark. I don't use them. And after export, what do I want to do? Well, I don't want to do anything. So these are going to be my base settings for a horizontal Instagram image. Now what I'll do before I click export is I'll go to the uh, left side here and I'll click on add and it's going to ask me to give it a name. So I'm going to write Instagram and then I'm going to put horizontal image. Okay. And I want the, it to be in the user presets folder. I'll click create. So now it's right there. Now I just click on it. Let's click on my video one. Now you can see the video one gave it a weird size, right? Long edge 2903 and whatever. Well, I'll click on the Instagram one and it did all the settings I needed. All I need to do is give this a name. This cat's name is Eddie. He's in kitty heaven, unfortunately for me, but hopefully he's having a good time. Uh, so this is Eddie and I'll click export. Right now it just exported Eddie to my desktop with those specs. Let's see here. It is 1080 by 720. So that's that image. And now whenever I want to go and export an image, here's Archie's in doggy heaven. But if I want to export this image again, I would just click on the pre uh, preset and I would give this a name. I would call it Archie. And it automatically did all the settings I needed and I just click export. So you could see how that could save you a lot of time. Now there's often times when you're going to use the same name. So you don't even have to enter the name of the file. Like I do, I put Eddie in and I put Archie in. If I went here, I'd put Adrian in. If I here, I put Jonesy in, whatever. I go through all my animals and I put all their names in, but there are, I mean, I didn't have to do that. I could have just called it Instagram horizontal or something or Instagram. And then if I, um, export them all at once. Let's say I shift on all of them, right? And I'm going to export all of them. I could put Instagram in here. And then it's going to sequentially number them starting with one. So they'll all get uh, exported onto my desktop eventually. And they're all here. There's uh, Archie one. Well, that's the one, the original one I did, right? There's Eddie. Here they are. Here's Instagram two and three and four and six, put six down here. Here's one up here and five here. I don't know why five isn't showing. Yeah, it's a good image. That's Eddie. So there's the images there. So you could see how I, hopefully you could see how that could save you a lot of time. 
here is that web page I'll show you. And it says, as a standard width of 1080 pixels, Instagram keeps your photo its original size as long as its height is between 566 and 1350 pixels. So you could see how that would work for these horizontal images. And again, I'll have that linked in the description below this video. And that's it. That's how to create an export preset in Lightroom. Thank you, everyone who watches my vi <laughs> Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.